So today's episode, we have the great, the the man himself who made it out of South Central Phoenix, the br- the brown boy that flew to the sky. <laughs> he's he's a uh, he's the he's the Kendrick Lamar of physical therapy. You know, yeah. he's our favorite, Cruz Romero. We talked to Cruz, my man, my man, Cruz Romero, about his uh, his upcoming graduation, and now uh, that, oh, now that we're in the present time, as we're recording this now, Cruz has already graduated and he's taking uh, he's already accepted a job. We also talked about his big time internship at Exos and why that place is a lot like Disneyland. Um, we talked a little bit about the SFMA, his working with athletes at Exos. But, you know, Dimir, my favorite part of the interview is probably us really getting into it about being a growing up as a poor brown kid up in South Central Phoenix, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I feel like that part, we really dive into what, does, what, what the podcast is truly about, right? I mean, of course, we get on here, we talk physical therapy, and that's our main, you know, audience. But then our goal is to dive deep into the actual therapist, or, you know, and see them as a person. Right. That's why we that's why we name it that way. We, we, we see their image and see that that he's a D.O.C. But then we dive deeper and say, you know, Cruz, what motivated you to become uh, the D.O.C. and become this all star, all star therapist that we know he's he's, he's going to be, man. So pretty cool stuff. Yeah, man. D.O.C. being director of communications for the APTSA, of course. And and yeah, we, we got to see his duck legs, you know, mm-hmm. for lack of a better term. Uh, we also <laughs> Heard his ridiculous story of him getting called a racial slur during his acute care mm-hmm. inpatient rehab and how he kept he just kept coming back for more when I would have been like deuces he went back in and that was a really funny and uh, telling story about uh, Cruz Romero's character. Uh, to me, yeah. it's Cruz is just one of those people that when you're talking you're like, how'd you get like this? <laughs> how'd you how'd you get like this, yeah, Cruz? Yeah, I, I yeah. Wow, huh? I'm pretty impressed right now because I would have. I'm a much like I'm just an awful person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of people are awful compared to Cruz, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, I'm a real douche. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a, like I'm not really. <laughs> <laughs> I got some work to do. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, enjoy the show. Happy birthday to any listeners out there that had a, a recent birthday. Um, yeah, it could be in the future. It could be three years from the recording of this day. Yeah. Sometime in January, it could be your birthday today. Happy birthday. Yeah, we don't know when people are going to listen to this. And even if it's not your birthday, happy birthday when yeah. it is going to be your birthday. Yeah. We're sorry for the robot apocalypse that's come down. If you're listening to this in 3042. <laughs> mm-hmm. Happy birthday to, the remaining, to you. To the remaining human survivors out there, stay strong, continue to fight. The goddamn robots. <laughs> That's awesome. Y'all are silly, man. We'll be stationed. We'll be stationed. <laughs> We're going to be near the border of Mexico. Look mm-hmm. for three flashing, continuous flashing lights. That's how you'll be able to tell we're not robots. Yeah. But all right, we got a little too far off there in a tangent. Peace. Here's another episode of the Duck Legs Podcast. We have the great Cruz Romero. If uh, you don't mind me saying the great Cruz Romero. So <laughs> thank you for coming on to the show. We have another one of these live streams. Uh, Cruz is the Director of Communications for the Student Board of Assembly. Uh, Board of Directors, I'm sorry. Um, and, and, you know, just tell us uh, a, a little bit more about you, your story, how uh, you got to where you're at, where you go to school at, and what are you currently doing? Yeah, absolutely. Well, first off, thank you guys. Um, Damir, Jared, Tyler, thank you so much for having me on. This is uh, an exciting, believe it or not, I was telling my patients about this, about being on this podcast and they're like (laughs) super excited. They're like, what is it? What is a podcast? And I was like, oh my God, man, killing me. But uh, no, seriously, believe it or not, this is the first podcast I've ever been on. So I've, you know, I've done my own thing as (laughs) welcome. Welcome Welcome to the party. First of many. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. 
Um, but no, it was a, it was a funny story. Just like explain to my patients what a podcast is and, <laughs> and just educating them about that. Um, yeah. A, yeah. Anyway, I know we'll get to patients in the, in a little bit, but mm-hmm. a little bit about me. So, uh, let's see, I, uh, born and raised in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, I went up to, uh, Flagstaff, Arizona for my bachelor's degree, uh, at NAU, Northern Arizona university. NAU. And, uh, yeah, that's right. Represent man. Shout out. Shout out. <laughs> and then, uh, and then I came back home. I took a year off. I worked as a physical therapy technician in an outpatient clinic. And then, uh, and then I got into school that year. I got into NAU, my alma mater. So it's been NAU all the way for me. Uh, let's see what else about me. I have two amazing dogs, uh, beautiful girlfriend. We just celebrated our five year anniversary. Whoa. And, um, yeah, man. Another one. Five years is a long time. We need applause buttons. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Cool's bomb like the Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) That let's see, that was in February. Um let's see, what else? Man, I'm I'm getting ready to graduate, guys. I'm uh I'm pumped. So I'm at my uh I'm at my internship right now, uh sports location. Uh the name is Exos. Incredible, incredible location. Of Exos, I've heard of, I've heard of those guys. Exos. I've heard of those guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man, yeah. yeah. Uh, we can. I talk remember about reaching that. out to somebody about Exos a while back. I don't, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know who that could be. Yeah. We'll get to that later. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, and then I graduate in May, coming up here pretty soon, and then take boards in July, and then figure out life from there. Yeah, cool. Cool. but yeah, yeah, that's me. That's me in a nutshell. That's awesome. Yeah, that's very that cool. Sounds great. So about those two dogs, man. Yeah, that's what I want to know. Yeah, let's talk about right. the dogs. Hit me. Now, what you got? Now, I, I believe they're pit bulls. They're pits. Yeah. They're pits. Yeah. The rapper? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cruz just walks around with pit bull. <laughs> yeah. This is my pit. <laughs> nah. Um, but no, so are pit bulls, should all pit bulls be just put down because they're too vicious and scary and oh, eat little dude. children? Uh. No, man. It's uh, it's one thing, uh, personally, I've been trying to, I've been trying to break that stigma. So if, if, uh, if you go to my social media, you'll see like videos and pictures and everything of my dogs. Uh, they're incredible and don't get me wrong. So I actually, um, I have one pit. She was adopted by my, uh, adopted her from my uncle. So my uncle wasn't able to take care of her. She was kind of a junkyard dog. He, he inherited her from another person. And so, uh, just kind of working with her, trying to train her and get her more social has been a challenge. But, uh, but then her daughter, my, uh, my newest dog, Cooper, she's two years old now. Um, she, she's just an incredible dog. They're loyal, uh, friendly dogs. They're, um, very protective, you know, so that is one thing. So they'll, they'll show up. If you show up and you kind of start, uh, start running up on me or anything they'll mm-hmm. like they'll come mm-hmm. after a person mm-hmm. yeah they're they're incredible dogs I need a very right very smart. when i meet cruz in person again with dogs approach him very slowly yes yeah very with slowly. my dogs yeah yes. <laughs> don't run up on him do not run up on yeah cruz. Don't, run up, don't run up on me man <laughs> cruz no, uh, what, yeah, uh, go ahead, go ahead. What, uh, what um breed are they yeah there you go yeah so cool. yeah. yeah so they're uh, they're red nose uh, uh, both okay. of them both okay. them are red nose uh yeah. so Here's a story. So my, uh, my older dog, Mercy, she's, if you go onto my Facebook, you'll see pictures and stuff. So she's the stockier, shorter, uh, light skin one. She's mm-hmm. the lighter one. And she's the one that I got from my uncle. So, uh, I ended up deciding my family and I decided like, Hey, let's have some puppies, you know, not knowing kind of like what that process was like. We kind of <laughs> went into it naively. Uh, my next door neighbor has like an incredible, super athletic dog. And, um, and we, we, you know, everything went very well. Uh, she was going through the pregnancy without any hitches at all. And then when, uh, when it was time to go into labor, I actually wasn't there. So I had went away on vacation and she went into labor early. So when I got back, she was like skinny and she looked sick and her hair was all raggedy and just, man, it just looked like something was wrong, you know? So I took her into the vet and uh, the vet assured me that there are no problems with her. You know, uh, commonly when you have uh, puppies, especially with larger breeds, um, they can have retained fetuses. So that was something that we were worried about. He said, no, I don't feel anything. We don't really need to take x-rays. 
So then uh, I said, okay, fine. A um, few days go by. She got a fever of like 105. And Jeez. dogs, they, they normally run high, but that is like very high, right? Mm-hmm. So then I took her to the ER. Sure enough, she had a retained fetus. Oh. So they had to do an emergency C-section. Well, not C-section. Uh, uh, they just had to like a, an emergency spay. Uh, hysterectomy, they had to take everything out. Jeez. And uh, it, was, it was the longest, most grueling eight weeks of my life, man. So eight because weeks. of that, eight weeks, right. So it, what happened was after that, she had to go on antibiotics because her uterus like started to inflame and just had so many issues. Uh, and so she went on antibiotics. And when they're on antibiotics, she had puppies, they can't breastfeed, right? Oh, man, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I had to bottle feed eight puppies, yeah, for weeks, and then I had to feed them afterwards. And I was in my first year of school. This was second oh, semester no. of school. No, dude. they tell yeah, you not dude. to get pregnant during dude. PT school. <laughs> yeah, <dude. laughs> they tell you that. Cruise man. man. Funny story, man. My mom just had her dog. Like she had puppies, and she got a pit. And I thought I had to put up with some stuff, and I would didn't have to do half the stuff you had to do. Man, I thought clean up dog poop was enough for me, man. You talking Dude. about feeding dogs? Oh, it was- oh my God, man. Oh, so my like, goodness. It was the craziest thing. So um, I would wake up at 6 a.m. I would feed him then. I'd go to school. I'd have to come back during lunchtime, feed him. And then uh, I'd study for as long as I could. I'd have to be back at 6, wake up again at midnight. So I'd have to feed him every six hours, right? You should have to be every six hours. It mm-hmm. was It was crazy, dude. And then... Because they didn't have their mom, because she couldn't be near them, right? Or else right. they'd get through and try to uh, try to uh, breastfeed and everything. Right, um, right. My dog was like moaning all the time. God. Yeah, yeah. So, but you know, all in all, like everything went well. They all found incredible homes. Um, my dog survived. Mercy survived. So to me, it was just like an incredible success story and. That it just like shows the resilience of, of pits and uh, of any dog breed for that matter. And uh, yeah, man, we made it through. And, and I always tell people like dogs are family, you know, they really right, are. Right, right. Um, so yeah, just a little bit about my dogs and the stuff that we've been through. And they're great, Ooh, man. They're great. That's awesome. Yeah. So <laughs> how much is training a dog like training a person? <laughs> where where does man, the gray we should, area we should ask we should ask my girlfriend she trains me all the time man so um let's see it, training a dog is really fun so you have to have lots of patience especially when they're puppies you can train them for maybe about five minutes and then they're like kids you know they'll they have a really short attention span so uh you get some treats uh, you give them treats. If they do good, you know, if they do what you want, then perfect. They get a treat. And then you just progressively make it harder and harder and harder to get a treat and they'll do it. You know, they'll yeah. go for it. They, they mm-hmm. love it, man. That behavioral Especially if conditioning. You some, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> if you have some good treats. So Cooper, my, my youngest, she was, um, she learned like super quick within months. She was able to like sit lay down shake stay like everything she has the commands down perfect and i always like to tell people with when you're teaching your dog commands and tricks and stuff like you got to do your verbal but then you also have to do like your your whatever you know your your gesture yeah your gesture so for cooper it's like so it's like sit is this um and then let's see stay is this and then lay down is here Mm-hmm. Um, go get them is like that. I just point to mm-hmm. whoever, yeah, away. and then she'll you like, got the kill she'll like run, command. Yeah. You got the kill command. <laughs> <laughs> she'll like run over and, and like mess with people and stuff. It's awesome, man. They're yeah. great dogs. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. awesome. And that's another thing to put on your resume is pit bull mother. Pit bull, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Seriously, and that's you can train a dog. You can train a human. Yeah. <laughs> Like the dodgeball movie uh, mm, reference yeah. there, Dimeir. <laughs> Yo, you know, yeah. you know, one of my favorite movies. Yeah. So, Cruz, my man. Yo, uh, I've I've kind of had a, a social media relationship with you for a, a little bit now. Yeah, we're going um, strong. We're going strong. We're going steady. We're going yeah. <laughs> we might raise a couple pit bulls together. Yeah, um, you know. <laughs> but yeah, man. Uh, ever since I've been on Twitter, you were you were definitely one of the the PT students to look up to and follow. Um, and then, you know, it's, it's weird now looking back on it. I don't remember exactly 
how you come across people like Cruz, but you're just scrolling through Twitter and from whatever retweets or mentions, you come across people like Cruz, you follow them, you see that they're doing amazing stuff. And then uh, you find out one day that, oh, snap, this dude has an invitation uh, or he won and uh, an interview to go to Exos and interview to get um, a position there for internship. And I didn't know what Exos was until our classmate Victor yeah. was like, yo, this is a, be an awesome place to do an internship yeah. if you're into sports and ortho stuff. And um, boom, I saw a Cruz post something on Instagram or Twitter one day that he got an inter- interview and I had to hit him up and be like, how do I get to be where you're at, yeah. sir? <laughs> and he was gracious enough to reply back to me on Twitter, direct message soon. He was like, yo, I got, I'm out with my family, but I will respond to you. And mm-hmm. he sent me a whole story on the plan of how he was even, he even told me what to do in my own program. He was like, if you're not, <laughs> if you're not contacting your CCCE now, like you're already behind. <laughs> yeah. So greatly appreciated. And how is that Exos internship going, man? Oh my gosh, man. It's, it's incredible guys. It's, um, my CI and I joke all the time. So my CI, his name is Jesse Ellis. He's a, he's a fellow, um, manual therapy fellow, incredible EIM, uh, just like exactly the way I want to practice in the future, you know, incredible guy. Uh, and we joke all the time that it, that Exos is like Disneyland. And, uh, Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure like after I finish here, I'm going to hit like a big rebound, you know, cause it's, it's, um, how do I, how do I say this appropriately? Like, like the equipment, the access to strength coaches, the, just everything that you get there. I, I don't, I don't think there's a lot of other places that can provide that much, um, that much value, you know, to, to the people that they work with, the patients and clients that they work with. All right. So incredible equipment. There's a full, like, uh, 60 yard turf field. Um, there's kettlebells, racks all over the place, um, platforms, um, sleds, man, anything you can think of. It's like Disneyland, you know, for, for physical therapy and strength and conditioning. It, it's, it's everything I've, I've kind of wanted, you know, uh, from a learning environment. Now do uh, you um, only treat athletes? No, actually we, they treat a general population as well. So they take, uh, Aetna, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, and Cigna, uh, ABC, that's how I learned it. So, uh, and, and so, yeah, we treat general population. We have tons of ankle sprains, cervical radiculopathy, lumbar radiculopathy, you know, uh, ACLs, everything, everything. And, you know, we do treat uh, some, I can't, you know, talk about who they are, but right, yeah, we, have, we have some, like, incredible elite athletes, uh, elite elite athletes we even they even take um military personnel so there was there was a yeah i know there was a (laughs) there's some really awesome i don't know anything about them they're actually very um uh what's a good secretive isn't isn't the right word they were very selective about what these individuals would say to you, you know, they didn't want you to get any intel on them at all. Yeah. But for the military some, guys, some special training, guys, yeah, yeah, yeah dude, they're special names. Ops, seriously. <laughs> uh, that stuff, that was really, I have so many stories guys. So let me know, just cut me off when you want me to stop talking, but it's, so, it's a podcast. Keep talking. All right. These guys, <laughs> these guys. So their training was so interesting because they would do some like extremely, extremely rigorous workout and then in between time when they're resting, they would have to do mental tasks at the same time. So they would set up like little grids uh, with cones, right? They would put them in certain patterns and certain colors, right? And they'd have them go do workouts and then come back while they're resting and like remember the pattern, go back, and then they'd have to come back and reproduce it, right? Wow. Um, it, was, it was like nothing like I've ever seen before, you know, and it totally makes sense. Like it's totally functional for what they're going to have to do in their, in their, uh, in their everyday life, you know, when they're in their actual, um, yeah. profession. Right, so right. yeah, man, it, it's interesting stuff. So, so not a lot of TheraBand and, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, man, I've been, I've been working, I've been trying to get at one of those clinics, man. Where do I find one of those clinics? It's just sideline heavy abduction and, just a bunch of bands <laughs> all day long for eight weeks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's it's funny, man. It's funny. Um, yeah, and, and that's a that's another big thing because 
I have access to the strength coaches there. My, uh, my therapeutic exercise, uh, just progressions and the way I, the way I think about everything now is totally different than it was before. You know, um, I still use TheraBand, but I'll use it for a different reason. You know, um, maybe if a patient has a, is at a very low level, but now I'm thinking, I'm thinking a lot, a lot different. Um, so they're big on FMS, SFMA. So you know, all the developmental patterns, four by four breakdowns. I'm using that every day, um, different developmental postures. Uh, what else am I doing? A you lot of a- manual therapy. So my CI, he's a fellow, so he's teaching me all his incredible stuff. He practices, I mean, you guys know Jeff Moore, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> He reminds me a lot of Jeff, honestly. Like him and him and Jeff are like exactly the same, uh, the way they practice. And so have beards. <laughs> Huge beards. Huge yeah. beards. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have mm-hmm. a pretty good hold of the four by four for SFMA? Does does, feel, does that start to make sense after a few weeks? Yeah, I feel I feel pretty good about it. <clears throat> so I actually so the FMS, I kind of had that down before I started, right? But mm-hmm. SFMA was one thing that they were really big on when when I started. So I had to learn I had to learn that pretty quick because mm-hmm. that's I didn't take the course for it. I, you know, so we, I just had to learn it, right? Um, and then once they once they broke down the four by four matrix and yeah. how to use it, man, it's just it just makes sense, you know. It and then repeating, repeating, repeating. The other nice thing is there's another, another student that's there with me at the same time. So a student was there before me, I came in, he left, and then another student came in after that. Right. So there's always been two guys there with Jesse, Jesse and I. Mm -hmm. Um, And what's nice is when we have downtime or which is few and far between, but when we do have downtime, we'll practice the breakouts, you know, like let's keep doing them over and over and over and over and over again. Um, yeah, and then practicing the correctives and making sure we feel really good. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. For those that's people awesome. who might not know what the four by four is, could you could you kind of maybe give it its ninety second elevator pitch? Yep, 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 absolutely. Okay, so you got to think developmental posture. So the first one is just straight line, right? The first posture is just lying supine, lying prone, whatever it is, and then from there you can go into quadruped, kneeling, and then standing. So that's the top row right? So supine, um, quadruped, kneeling, standing. And then the, on the bottom, the bottom column here is, uh, let's see, it's assistance and then no resistance and then resistance with assistance. And then the last one is just resistance. And it's so funny because like when I first started, I was like, okay, um, I just, it would immediately go from no resistance to resistance, right? Yeah. I would never help. I would never help my patient. I never really understood how to make them more stable and then do an exercise. So, uh, one of the common things that I really love doing with patients is having them bring their hands up, right? Pushing, pushing their hands up, and then giving them some core support with their upper extremities, right? Yeah, we're all doing this, um, and then have them do a lower extremity exercise, right? Whether it's in supine or uh, tall kneeling. Um, it just gives them a little bit more input. It's, it's almost like the breakout, right? So where you do the Faber and then the stabilized Faber yeah. and then, and then the Faber gets better. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like that over and over and over and over again. So, uh, TheraBand is really helpful. So when we're doing different positions, uh, I'll have them grab a TheraBand with one hand or put the TheraBand around their legs and yeah. then it gives them that extra input. So, yeah. It's yeah, crazy what a little extra stability will do to someone's movement. You'd right. think that just because they're flexing more that they wouldn't be able to do as much of a range of motion. Right. And really the exact opposite is true. Sometimes when exactly. you get someone's core engaged, all of a sudden their squat is deeper. Yes. They can, they can go further. It's, it's, you're like, whoa. Then, then we get yep. into that. Is it right? Uh, tissue extensibility or is it the SMCD? Oh, right? the Ever since what, uh, what's, uh, what's his face told us last week? That's just blew my mind away. Ooh. We can't release it yet. Um, oh, you talking about Quinn? Quinn, yeah. That whole control and training, but we won't get into that. That that's another yeah. that's <laughs> another episode. Let's go. Yeah, but no, man, it's it's great. And then and then these these uh, putting them in these different postures is 
is then more assessment, right? Because then you're able to figure out, okay, they weren't able to do it in standing, but they can do it in tall kneeling. Like, why is that? Okay, maybe something below the knees is, is like really messing with them, you know? Mm-hmm. So then let's train that up. Let's do, mm-hmm. let's do some TheraBand. Let's get some specific like inversion, eversion, strengthening going, whatever it is, or let's do some plantar flexion strengthening. It's, it, all, it all really kind of helps. <laughs> it gives you the, all the pathways are open now. Exactly. You can just pick and choose and conquer. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. The big one, the big one for me is that lumbar lock, man, that thoracic rotation one. We have a lot of baseball players, dude. Yeah. Yeah. And man, um, I heard this one day and I loved it so much. So, uh, my CI and I were talking and he was like, when you think about elite athletes, it's not because they're, they're like, they move really well. Right. Cause some of these guys have, like really impaired movement. Yeah. Um, it's just that they're able to compensate better than like the average person, right? So right. an athlete, even an elite athlete, may not necessarily be able to move better. They're just like really good compensators. So then we get them in these positions where they can't really get away from it. And then we ask them to do something. And it's like, all right, that is like, <laughs> let's exploit that weakness, you know? Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Cool, cool. Yeah. That is awesome. Yeah, like so Quinn, Quinn was on uh, last time, shout again to Quinn, and he was like, LeBron James has like a like ridiculous a low number on the seven. FMS. Yeah. I think it's Whoa. seven FMS. Yeah. yeah. Seven I'd have to double one. check that. And FMS is different than SFMA, but yeah, I mean, that's pretty telling. Mm-hmm. Right. But see, then, then, then it goes to like, then it goes to show like, you know, and I, and I love FMS and SFMA, but I know s- some other physical therapists are talking about the, the movement system and like, you know, where we're going with it. And, and they're talking about like, is it really helpful? Is it really beneficial? And yeah. I mean, for LeBron James to be able to do what he does, man, shout out to LeBron James, man. He, he dropped a comment about physical therapists. He mentioned Absolutely. PTs he did. in his, uh, in that. his Instagram. Oh, where, dude. Where, where have you been at? It was like the first, like the first profession that he put to, he said, we need yep. more physical therapists. And then he's, Spat off a bunch of other, ther- yeah. You know, my bad. Said, we don't need more LeBron James. We need more physical therapists. Uh, my yeah. bad. Yeah. Yeah. Hashtag we need more. James. Yeah. Hey, hey, Adam. Yeah. Listen. Shout out. We do need to get LeBron James on the show. You know what? Yeah. We got, I'll Ooh. send him a text tomorrow. Send him, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> him <up. laughs> No, hey, no, Cruz, man. I mean, the way that he's he's all around the country, and then now he's at Exos. Hey, look, get hey, get him on Cruz. Yeah, Brom, Brom. Brom. I'm a, I'm assuming man. Cruz is only like at least four degrees separation now between yeah. himself and LeBron James. <laughs> right, 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 make right, it happen. Right. Full yeah, disclosure, I did hit him up on Instagram with a direct <laughs> message. So, yeah, not a direct message. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah. no! I mean, I uh, you know, subtweeted him and at, you know, Adam and stuff like that. But I didn't think that you we'll actually see. hit him up in DMs. We'll, we'll see, man. Yeah, Gary v, after it. Gary V says it goes down in the DMs. Yeah, yeah, so, that's right. <laughs> try it, try it, and if we can have him on, that'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah, um, man. Yes. yes. Yeah. So, um, my man, my man, yo, my yo. man, my man, my man, my man. <laughs> What's South Central Phoenix like? South Central, man. All right, so first of all, first of all, see. is is, is Phoenix considered West Coast or the South? Ooh. Oh man, so it's the Southwest. Yeah, Arizona's Southwest. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're not gonna let them. You can't. <laughs> you gotta. I can't. You're, you're either West Coast. You're either West Side or Dirty South, man. Oh so, man. So it's Louisiana, Tennessee, and Georgia's on. And we got okay. Phoenix. So we all wrap the South without a problem. <laughs> yeah, right, we, right. we know what the dirty South feels like. Right, right. And well, it's mostly racism. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so. well, then, uh, then, I'm, then I, have to, I have to say this outside, man. It's the okay. South. Then. Okay. Yeah. It's the all South. Right, all right. Yeah. That's oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. South comes before West in Southwest. So there yeah. we go. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to the South, man. Yeah. <laughs> Um, South, man, the South side. So, uh, I've lived here my, my entire life, dude. So I, uh, I don't really know much different. You know, I've, I've been actually, because of my position on the board, I've been able to explore the country and have seen some amazing, uh, places, have heard some incredible accents, man. It's, uh, it's awesome. I love it. Um, I'm all about learning new stuff, you know? So, um, man, the the South side, say that again. Where's the craziest thing, uh, place you've been or, you know, just more, the, the most unique place you've been so far? The most influential for me yeah. was uh, going to D.C., Washington, D.C. Mm, okay. Yeah, that was, 
being able to explore the national mall, man, that was, that was fun. And it was, it was humbling, you know, to see, uh, to see our origins and see kind of where we came from and doing lunch um, with Obama and all that stuff. Mm. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Right. It was before kind of everything transitioned over. So yeah, it was a good time. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Um, Okay. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) You're you're not getting called up to DC anymore, Cruz. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) Um, Man, let's see. What do I have to say about the South? Man, I I love this place. Uh, Mm -hmm. I love it. It's, it's, it's literally shaped um, the way I think about the world and, and, uh, and my life and, uh, I, I don't know where, where I'd be, who I'd be uh, without the South Side. So I grew up um, very impoverished conditions. I'm a first-generation U.S. citizen, so my parents moved over from Mexico um, and immigrated from Mexico, and, and then, you know, I was born, my, my, the rest of my siblings were born here and um, grew up very impoverished. Would, you know, crazy stories, man, like, we'd go into the kitchen. Um, we'd open the refrigerator. There's like nothing in the fridge, you know? So we'd like reach for the saltine crackers. And I don't know if you guys know what that's like or Roman noodles and, you know, do hey, it that yeah. way, man. It's a, uh, yeah. yeah. So very, very impoverished conditions. Um, my, uh, a lot of my friends and family were into gangs. So a lot of them are locked up or, uh, some people even passed away and, it's a, uh, it, it's serious, man. It's, it's serious kind of on the South side. But I will say that I think because of that, like knowing that my friends take, have taken such a, a lot of my friends have taken such a different route than I have. Um, it's a, uh, it's humbling for me to no matter like how much I do in my life and you know, what successes I've ever had or, or things that I've gained, I always come back to my roots and, right. and really be humble about it, you know, and know that, that, uh, there's people a lot worse off than me. So, um, and that's why I, again, like it framed kind of the way I think about the world and, and, uh, I always do my best to kind of help people out, you know, cause okay. I don't want to, I know what it's like, man. I know what it's like to, to be, in the sock, you know? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Little, little Brown boy made it out of South central Phoenix. That's right, man. Speak, speaking <laughs> of Kendrick, man, I'm just, I'm in this Kendrick vibe. Yes. From Cruise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. Black boy fly song. Yeah. 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 Brown boy fly. Yeah. Brown boy fly. <laughs> Kendrick's nice. Kendrick's nice. Can't wait to listen. Yeah, man. You, you want to do your Kendrick impression real quick? Oh, you got that. <laughs> I don't, I don't have a, I don't have a Kendrick. I can, I can help you yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. Do you agree? We saw Kendrick li- live at ACL last year, yeah. and he was, like, super well at connecting with people. He kept yeah. asking people the crowd. He's like, do you agree? Hey, I'm going to play a few more songs. Do you agree? Like, yes. <laughs> bringing people in. Yeah. No, but he actually saw – one of my friends the next morning saw him at the airport, and she was like, are you Kendrick? Flying south by southwest. Uh-huh. Just not a, not a jet. South by Southwest, heading back yes. to Compton, and he took a picture with her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Super. Yeah. Yes, my name is Kendrick Lamar. There you How go. You? Yes. <laughs> Cruz. Hello, Cruz. This is Kendrick Lamar. I always like to say that you. I'm a big fan of yours. And uh, that's that's too good. That's <laughs> scary. That's that's scary. That's scary. For, a, for a second, bro. For a sec. So this the the video was on Dimir's face, and then you were talking, and I was like, "Is that Kendrick? Is that Kendrick? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you guys have Kendrick on." I don't know about that. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, let's see. I'll, I'll try it again and ask you another question. Is Kendrick? Lamar. Um, I'm not, I mean, not as we have Kendrick Lamar here. You want to come up, Kendrick? Come on. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what's up, Douglas? What's up, Douglas? Uh, Mr. Romero, um, what is what is it like to be get called a racial slur? Oh, dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Man, are you guys are you guys ready for a story? Yeah. Uh, yes, please. All right. So. Uh, so in my first rotation, my first clinical rotation was inpatient, inpatient setting, uh, level one trauma center. There was uh, an individual that came in because uh, of an opioid overdose, right? She survived. Um, and, and she was just like very upset. You could tell like she just wanted to get out of the hospital. But obviously like as a part of the team, physical therapy had to come out and clear her, make sure that she could walk. Um, so I walk in and she's just like, immediately, immediately was just on me. Like, who are you? Like, why are you here? 
Um, I don't want, I don't want you to see me yada yada. And I said, you know, that's, that's totally understandable. But before I go, like, let me just explain to you what this process, like how this process works and who I am and, um, you know, why I'm here. And I, I hope to like help you out a little bit. Right. Um, cause I can get some stuff for you to make your life a little bit easier. I can teach you some strategies, yada, yada, this, that. So she was super just like non-compliant. Um, by the end, uh, oh, and her husband was there and her husband was actually a really nice guy. Uh, they were, they were white. Um, they were Caucasian and the husband was like, you know, just listen to the man. He's trying to help you out. Just listen to him, answer all of his questions. And, uh, like by the end of it, I, we're, you, you could tell we we're both kind of getting a little frustrated. So I said, ma'am, like, I understand you're frustrated right now, but just give me a second to talk. And when I said that, she just snapped on me, dude. She was like, you know, who are you? Like, um, and then she brought up like the craziness. This was, let's see, this was back in like November, October. So mm. this was during mm. the, this was like during the, during the primaries, right? right so, right. um, so she was like, you know, like you dirty Mexican, like, I can't believe, I can't believe, you know, they let you in here to come see me. Like, why don't you go back to Mexico? And like, mm -hmm. this is exactly what Trump is talking about. Like, I want to, wow. you know, I want you guys all to go back where you're from. And I was like, I was like, like, I just didn't know like how to react, man. I was just stunned. I was totally stunned. Right. And I, I like did not once say like anything, like, anything to kind of shoot her off to, that way. You're just trying to get her to exercise, right? Bro, right. I was just trying to get her. Dude, I didn't, eval I didn't even, isn't even exercising. Yeah, I didn't even want her to exercise. I just, yeah. I just, yeah, I just wanted her to walk down the hall. I just yeah. wanted to assess her gait, make sure that she would be safe to de to get DC'd, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, so then I was hit with that and I said, okay, all right, that's enough. Like, I'll, I'll just leave. Okay. So then, um, as I'm walking away, like I, I stop and think about it and her husband, like I could hear as I'm walking out, her husband is like, you know, why did you have to say that? Like, why did you, why did you do that? Yeah. Um, the man is just trying to help you out. Like, don't you see, like these people are just trying to help you out. And then I stopped and I was like, okay, like, dude, I'm, I'm so heated right now. I'm, I'm really upset. But if, if I can do something to just help like their family out, cause I was trying to kind of think about like their perspective on everything. Right. And obviously mm -hmm. this woman, like she's impaired. Um, she's not really in a state to make decisions for herself. Yeah. She's, she's um, obviously angry. She's super angry. Mm -hmm. And, um, and yeah, like I just, I decided like, okay, I'm just going to try one more time. So I went back, I told my CI like what the situation was. I came back uh, and my CI was like, no, you don't have to go in there. You know, she was like super rude to you. Yeah. You do not have to go back in there. So I said, you know, I just want to do it one, one more time because I feel like, and I'm, I, I'm like a glutton for punishment, man. Because Dude, you must I felt, be. <laughs> I felt so Cruz, bad. I Cruz, felt so Cruz, bad. Cruz, excuse me. Hold on, hold on, hold on. To get our listeners to listen to part two of this, we're actually yeah. going to hold this story, okay? Because we're going to send right. another link. Hold this story. Make Ooh, our listeners listen to part you two. Got so, you got it. So we got to finish this one. All right, you got it. Cool. Does Does Cruz come in with a baseball bat? <laughs> <laughs> or with his pitbull? <laughs> with his pitbull? <laughs> <laughs> with Kendrick Mercy. Lamar? Mer oh, oh yeah. blazing Kendrick Lamar with the pitbull? <laughs> yes. oh, mercy. Mercy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> all right, man. We're gonna send you another leak. All right. Hey, stay all tuned. Right. When we last left, our when we last left, <laughs> the duck legs. Oh, I want to make it sound like a, a soap opera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need cue the music, right? Is it when we last left, our hero was being getting called racial racial slurs by an angry white lady who he was just trying to perform an eval with. This is what opioid overdose. <laughs> this is opioids make you racist. No, I mean, dude, for real though, man, those people that are like recovering on the alcohol and everything, those uh, they are they are in a tough, tough state, man. They yeah. are, I didn't realize how 
tough a lot of that stuff was for him. But back to yep. the story. Yep. Back to the story. He, if he did, or he just now picking up, right? He, he, it was over. He, you could have walked away. Cruz could have walked away and said, you know what, uh, eval, I'm just going to write it up, you know, whatever. Here's right. Your- this is an acute care setting, right? And you walk into an e- – like picture – anybody try to picture this. You walk into an acute care eval. You're an intern. You're a student. Your first internship? Yep. First one. And – you walk in, and then you try to be your nice little humble, I'm just Hi. trying to fix people. I'm trying just, to save the world. Just a student. And then you get called a dirty Mexican. Yep. M- maybe worse than that. You leave. You, know, you, you, you leave. You're heated. You're about to go get your pit bulls <laughs> to go sick on this patient. And you come back for more. <laughs> <laughs> and and may, you know maybe Cruz has this turning point now when you know he walks out of the the hospital room and he's like no and this is where like he has this kind of like Obama moment <laughs> it's like mm-hmm. no I can make a difference if what, I can change the, if, if I can gum? make if I can make one person less racist on this planet then I've done my job and with that we'll see what happens all right so I walk in. And um, and it was worse the second time. <laughs> <laughs> You're killing us. You're killing it was, us. It was much worse the second time. So oh. uh, so so yeah. So then she You're ruining she, my narrative, dude. She stands up and uh, she almost like she's like approaching me, you know. And I was like, all right, I'm done. Like I just walk away. And like as soon as I walked in, it was like okay, just all gloves off. She was like almost like coming after me. So. Mm-hmm. She walked me, so in, in the setting, you hit the front door, and then the first thing you get to is like, there's a, just a little hallway in every, in every room. It's like, I don't know, maybe five feet. Yeah. Uh, and then to the left is immediately a, a restroom, right? To the left or right, depending on which side you're on. And as soon as I make it to the restroom, which right after that is their bed, and she's in the first bed, uh, she sees me and she just goes off. And her husband is like trying to hold her back. And this was like, this lady was like, she had to have been like in her seventies, you know, she was, wow. she, was, she, was she was, she was, she was old. Yeah. She was old. And, uh, you know, the nice thing though is, There's is nice thing? The, yeah. The nice thing was like, I got to see, I got to see her ambulate. So I was yeah. like, Oh, perfect. Like, <laughs> oh, great. all right. You're, you're like, you're good. You're good to go. Like you, um, you, you don't need anything. She right. was like walking without uh, anything, you know? Yeah. So I was like, yeah. okay, great. You're like, good to go. You're safe. You'll be fine. her. Her hatred got her up to ambulate. Yeah. She hated Mexicans enough to get up. Like yeah. who knows, who knows what other treatment interventions would have gotten her walking yeah. other than her hatred for Mexicans. Yes. Can yes. you charge Sorry. for that? <laughs> Can we bill for racism? Dude, I uh, I don't know. I can't remember. I can't remember exactly what happened with the billing. I just remember that craziness. But then, dude, her husband comes out and like, it was just like the saddest story ever, man. He was like crying in the middle of the hospital. He was just bawling. And he was like, I apologize. And like, I like um, Mexicans. Yeah. <laughs> friends are Mexican. Yeah, dude, it was it was crazy, man. So then after that, I uh, I posted like that night, I posted on Facebook uh, so maybe earlier that year, like maybe eight months before that, um, I spent my spring break in uh, Rocky Point kind of helping out the community, right? We, we went out uh, as part of my class uh, to go help everyone out there for physical therapy related stuff, a lot of community service. And, uh, and I took a picture there and, and I had a huge like sombrero hat, right? And I, and I took like a picture like this and I was like, perfect. Like that's the picture I'm going to use. I put it on Facebook and then I reposted it and I told the entire story. It was long and man, it, yeah. it got an, it got a crazy response. Cause yeah. you know, obviously like every, your friends come out when you, uh, when you tell stories like that, but mm-hmm. yeah. it was, uh, it was interesting, man. It was and the first, it was the first time, um, I had ever to my face like that, like been straight up just told like you dirty Mexican, just like right. that. It was, it was right. insane. That's crazy. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. And that's that picture in that Facebook post. That's the reason why, you know, we brought this up because I did yeah. see that <laughs> when it happened and I was like, Oh shit. <laughs> yeah. I, I had, you know, I didn't even think, you know, to relate that back to, Oh yeah, this dude is on his first internship. Yeah. Dealing with this, you know? Yeah. But, awesome. 
Yeah. Uh, so uh, this episode of the Duck Legs Podcast is brought to you by racism. <laughs> Try not to be racist. <laughs> So you're going to do fun. like an opposite racism things like NAACP or like you know, <laughs> this episode is brought to you by the NAACP <laughs> <laughs> the National Association of Colored People. <laughs> yeah, dude. So they're going to definitely like sanction this off of item. <laughs> no, man. This is, <laughs> listen, but let me just say that uh, the Duck Legs <laughs> podcast, thanks to Zach Stearns, is on the APTA website now. Via his his awesome blog post, so yes. people are going to click that link and they're going to come here and they're going to hear about three black brown people and one honorary <laughs> well, brown person super talking about white race, person talking about racism. Super white person, <laughs> like it's like pale. Yeah, white. <laughs> yeah. We have, we go through all the colors of the spectrum right here. Yeah. Well, the, uh, <laughs> well, shoot. Speaking of color, um. Chris, what are your, you know, opinions or why do you believe there's not a bunch of diversity in, in physical therapy at all? Like you, in our, like in our profession. Yeah. Yeah. In our profession. Do I, do I, you think that if, if there were that maybe a situation would have been mended or, you know, just not have happened or you think that was just deeper than what physical therapy God, man, that's, that's a, that's such, such a great question. So I actually wrote my, my capstone, which was recently accepted. So I was, uh, yeah, man, I'm ready for graduation, dude. So okay. I just have one week to go, and as long as I don't get fired, like I'll graduate. Man. But um, yeah, man, I wrote my capstone on um, on service learning and a lot of extracurricular activities, right? And actually, in my research, uh, I used a lot of the research from the education section, the APTA education section, and mm. shout out to the education section. And uh, they talked a lot about cultural diversity, and they talked about the need for improvements in cultural diversity as part of our uh, professional development, you know, as physical therapy students. And essentially it's, it has a bunch of different criteria. I don't want to bore you with that, but it talks about the, the disparities in terms of having, uh, minorities that decide to pursue a DPT education, right. Or even right. PTA for that matter. Right. Um, and it's an issue, right? It's an issue because when, if we can't appropriately relate to our patients, then we don't know what barriers they're encountering, right? When they go out into their community, uh, if we give them like a home exercise program or whatever it is, or even uh, getting to therapy, like if they have transportation issues mm -hmm. or if they have a language barrier or even just understanding um, just your patient on a human level, right? Right. right. It's, it's an issue. Um, and I think in preparation for this, like you guys cited that we have like 1% for African Americans and about 3% for Latino. Is that right? Is that what mm -hmm. you guys found? Yep. So, so if you think about that, like obviously our patient population is much more diverse than that. And we all know that minorities are much more likely to seek out healthcare, right? To seek out care because uh, because they need it because of socioeconomic issues. Right. Um, so then there's like, there's an issue there, right? Yeah. There, if, if we can't appropriately relate to our patients then how do we expect them to get better? Right. So I don't really know the answer guys. It's, it's like, it's an issue, but yeah. I don't really know, but you can stay tuned because actually the Arizona chapter in, is introducing uh, legislation for the house of delegates. So there's a motion and you guys can look it up. Um, so if you go to the APTA website, you can look up this information on kind of what's coming out, but obviously the motions are in development. So we'll see kind of what comes of that. And basically it's, they want to try and improve cultural di diversity. And I recently attended an event, uh, man, it was like, it was like in January or something, uh, maybe in December uh, on cultural diversity and trying to improve not only uh, have like more minorities come into our profession, but also improve the diversity, the cultural um, diversity of individuals. No, it's, that's not cultural competency is what I'm trying oh, to get. Okay. At. Okay. Okay. Of, of, you know, physical therapists, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so then, so then unofficially, like my answer is because the professor asked me this question too. Like she was, and, and she's white and she's just asked like Cruz, like from your opinion, like you're really involved and you do lots of things for our profession. Like it's great. So like, why don't more minorities want to uh, like apply for school and uh, just get involved in our, in our profession. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and I think, 
it goes back to a lot of the socioeconomic issues that we experience as minorities, right? Yeah. Getting to getting to college, yes. um, getting funding for college, um, making it through that whole education, right? That whole education system. So if like as a as a minority student, I I would say from growing up at a young age, like my early early on education wasn't like the greatest, you know, but. Mm-hmm. Because I was because I was advanced for my age, like in, in schooling, I was able to take college classes like during high school, and that helped like supplement a lot of the extra stuff that I needed. But right. for a lot of my classmates in high school, like they didn't really, and and I don't want to like put down any any of my uh, any of my old high school friends. Like I'm not, this is not directed at anyone. But I think like overall in general, like what I experienced was. Like it's not good to do good. Yeah, you know, in school, it's, it's like not it's cool. just, it's just, it's just like there's that mentality, you know, in mm-hmm. like it's hood in public minority. school, man. It's, yeah, and yeah, that's hard to overcome yeah. the stigmas of hood public school. It's yeah, it's yeah. you know, like to be the crazy. one actually listening in class. Yeah, mm. Cruz is taking no. college courses. Yeah, yeah, taking no. notes over there. Yeah. No yeah. more invites to parties, Cruz. Bro, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, I'm it, fucking, oh, look, I'm taking notes. Ah, oh, little bitch. Oh, look, yeah. Little, yeah. Little bitch taking notes. Yeah, man. It's great. Like, I even talked about it on my, on my piece, like, on imposter syndrome that, that, like, as, like, while I was growing up, I actively tried to, like, stifle myself, you know, to, mm-hmm. to fit in because it was so uncomfortable to be, like, jokingly just, like, ridiculed for doing well in school. Um, it's tough man and i don't really like know the answer other than like in my in my home like for my for my siblings um like going to school and setting like the bar really really high um has let everyone in my family even like extended family know that like that's possible you know right and right that that it's okay to do that that it's okay to go to college and try to make something of yourself Um, and now like my little brother is the last one he's the baby and um, he's going to be starting at NAU um, in uh, in August, like when school starts up. So, and my sister followed my younger sister. So it's me, my younger sister, my younger brother mm-hmm. um, are following, like all taking that same path, you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. So maybe just like lead from the front. Yeah, you know, do I think, something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think this is cliche, but I think you are the answer, sir. I think. You know, Ooh. hey, no, like that. No. I think, you know, just you doing what you're doing, and you know, having the cojones, you know, mm-hmm. to to handle all the criticism, you know, all the criticism for when you know, back to those high school days. High school days, you get criticized for doing good, yeah, and then when you do good, you get criticized by some racist patients for being too good, right? <laughs> but I don't, I don't want to see no. So it's it's a very yeah. fine line that you've walked ever since, you know, you, you've grown up young Mexican kid, South central, you know, we can, we can assume the, the conditions that he, that Cruz is, uh, has fought and made it out of shout out to Brown boy fly. Um, <laughs> I'm very, I'm very proud of you Cruz and, and to know where he's at now to, to doing all the success and, and all the, the epic stuff that he's doing now is, is a really amazing to look at. And, you know, he, yeah. dude hasn't graduated PT school yet, but he's he already feels like a mega success story. And then the, the the cool thing about it is that the reason why we create this podcast is to talk to people like Cruz, the ones that are high performers, and then really what got you there, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, it's it's pretty cool, and that's the whole point of the Douglas podcast. So to have uh, you on, like many of our guests, to have you on tell your story, and then to hear you say through all of that, I'm still you know successful or going to you know continue to drive. Um, yeah. Pretty cool. So you you spoke a little bit about uh, imposter syndrome, and I really just want to know, you know, uh, again, just to, your takes on it. Why did you write the piece? And then some things that you are using to combat that. And, you know, backstory to this is that I actually suffered through this, and me and you spoke about this a little bit. Um, And, I mean, we went, we, we went deep in that conversation. We went I mean, deep, man. We really went good. Yeah, we, we went pretty deep, and it was not too, you know, long, you know, um, <laughs> long after, after you dropped that piece. I was going through a moment in uh, just, just in PT school, just the up and down of that. And then you were like, dude, you, you're worthy enough to, to do this. So don't think that way. So again, you know, why did you write the piece? Uh, you really, really helped me get through that moment as Jared and Tyler did. 
uh, my partners on, on the show. So, uh, you know, why did you write a piece and tell us a little bit more about it? Yeah, man. Well, first off, again, guys, like, thank you so much for, for your kind words and inviting me on the podcast. Like, it means so much just to have this platform to share more about my story. And, um, yeah, imposter syndrome, it's, uh, it's, it's a common, it, like, doing my research. So, I, I experienced it when I first got into, into DPT school. Let's start there. And in my piece, so you can find it on apta.org slash pulse. Um, and, and I don't really know like, like why I started first feeling it. Well, man, that's, that's a lie. Um, I started feeling it in DPT school and it's because like I was around so many high performers. Right. And Mm -hmm. I think for Mm -hmm. me, like what I wasn't able to share, like in the actual, um, article was that, uh, like I, I, in, in my life, like all the, all the great things that I've done, like there's few times when I experienced like just total straight up rejection, you know? Right, so right. then when I, when I got to DPT school, I didn't really know like how to handle that and how to cope with that, you know, how to pivot from those types of situations. Um, Cause I was always really successful in high school and, and college and things just kind of came easy for me. And I know a lot of people are going to hear that and say like, oh, Cruz, like that's just, that's just weird. Like, why would you say stuff? But it's like, it's just the honest truth. And I don't really know like, like how to better like explain that. But then when I got into DPT school, I was surrounded by just incredible, incredible people, really smart, really forward thinking, just like the best people ever. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think in the piece I talked about how, where like some the professor would ask a question and then like immediately before I could even formulate an answer and like start to think about what I wanted, like someone was there with the answer. And I was like, holy smokes, like man, <laughs> how, how are they able to do that? You know? Right. So then I got into really like this, this competition, like just a chip on my shoulder, like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to do better than everyone, you know? And mm-hmm. it was like such a terrible way to think. And I got like, totally out of whack with my life, um, with taking care of my dogs and, and my relationship with my girlfriend, my relationship with my family, I kind of like started to become angry and, Mm. and anxious all the time. And it was so weird to, to experience that. Right. So then I started feeling like, like I was undeserving of where I'm at in school and, um, and feeling like a fraud. And that's really like what the imposter mindset is, right? Like a feeling that, you're a fraud. Um, and it's, it's terrible, man. It's terrible. Like I would wake up and think it and all throughout the day, like I'd be thinking the same thing. Like mm-hmm. I don't really deserve to be here or, um, how did I make it through college or how did I even get here? Right. And, uh, yeah. So, so then I talked about like some strategies, right? So Dimir, you asked like, okay, what are the strategies you use to, to kind of recognize it right and Mm -hmm. i talked about five things so if i'm remembering correctly it was like i talked about Mm. self-reflection i talked about like acknowledging imperfection because everyone's like no one is perfect even like your mentors that you idolize like no one is perfect lebron james yeah (laughs) not not perfect we know his fms score (laughs) yeah yeah. yeah. (laughs) (laughs) and then uh and then i talked about like creating goals like and, and ways to kind of create your goals so that they are realistic, right? Right. right. Um, and you don't feel like you're always trying to catch up to yourself and chasing this inaccurate uh, representation of who you want to be. Like, man. Uh, and then the last one, last two were like accepting, acceptance, and then like adopting that growth mindset. Um, right. Yeah. So Abundance. if you guys want to dive further into that, man, but. It's terrible guys. And, and it's so common dude. And, and the outpouring of support and comments that came in because of that piece, like just blew, blew me away. I was not expecting that. That piece, um, was shared the most, uh, like, and got like the most reactions in history of like our blog. So (laughs) it was like, it was out of control. Like I was not expecting that at all. Basically like you are not alone. Like, yes. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Awesome. Awesome. And just to reiterate, um, 
you know, those people that might be listening, Tim Ferriss has got a very similar story. I don't know if you've heard it, Cruz, but it's, it's, it's almost right there with you. Um, is when he went to Princeton and he, and then he almost like dropped out because things were, and it, it drove him to suicide. To, he didn't commit suicide because obviously Tim Ferriss is still alive. Yeah, but, right. uh, it, 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 oh, but, uh, like to the point where he's getting a book <laughs> and he, he like was like obsessed with it. And, um, he's one of the most famous podcast people there is. And, and it's something mm-hmm. that is pretty um, widely shared on his stuff. So, so yeah, yeah. there's, there's I, plenty I of it out there. That. I didn't yeah. know that. And, and you yeah, should man, listen to it, man. It's cra- You'll be like, Whoa! like, I guarantee you, hmm. you should go find it. He has a little, yeah. he, he writes about it a couple times. Yeah. And, and I think uh, I, I will definitely go check that out, Tyler. That's, that's a great recommendation, man. Um, but I, I found like in the research, cause I was doing a lot of research before I wrote the pieces, is it's so common in high performers, you know? Yeah. Because these people, like these individuals, are are constantly like trying to trying to improve themselves, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and every single time you get out of that like circle of comfort, you, you'll like experience it. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's like when you when you put yourself outside of your circle of comfort, is like when you'll feel like okay, I'm not deserving of all this stuff that's mm-hmm. going on in my life. You know, mm-hmm. it's. And, and it's, a, it's a fallacy. It's a total fallacy because everyone is thinking that. It's not just you. It's not just you. That makes so much sense. Mm-hmm. And I can already think of like things in the past and stuff that I want to do now that's going to take me out of my comfort zone. And I already know the feeling of like, oh, shit, I suck at this. <laughs> and I'm just going to go home and this is something to check off the box of not to do again. Mm-hmm, and, yeah. you know, even doing my internship now at Home Health, it's, it's you, you definitely have instances of – well, this feels not for me. I'm going to leave mm-hmm. right now. And yeah. then, you know, you do need that mentor mentor, or something in yourself that's like, no, it's, that's one instance and you're just learning. This is mm-hmm. a process. You're learning. Yes. This doesn't yes. mean you should just quit and drop everything and doubt everything that you used to believe. Yeah, yeah. Yes, man. Gr- uh, yeah. Great book that comes to mind right now is Learn Optimism by um, uh, Dr. Seligen. I forgot his name. But anyway, Learn Optimism. Uh, it's, it's a great book, and it just helps you just guide through all that stuff. And that's a book that I picked up, and ironically, we're also reading it inside of my uh, modern patient uh, care cor- uh, management course. So a uh, great, great book to read. And thank you for sharing your story about that, man. That's, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, absolutely awesome man guys i'm taking notes i carry this thing around with me everywhere so i'm <laughs> i'm uh tim ferris and learning optimism i'm gonna have to go check these out no, no. we need to get that website going shout out to will boyd yeah <laughs> the show notes there what a beat for people mm-hmm. um, but that's that's on another episode um my man my man my man my man every my time man. i hear that every time i hear that i think of training day dude my man so uh ooh, you got a, anybody got a good denzel no that's you no no, no you're the master uh, person name I'm just, <laughs> i wish i could channel a denzel mm-hmm. he's hard he's he is hard, hard. he's yeah. hard because you got to do the mouth the face yeah the yeah, look, yeah. The, the voice i mean the guy who impersonates all of them? Not the guy that be on ESPN, but the other guy, Jay Farrow or somebody from SNL. Oh yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean the one. I mean he's great at you know just channeling his inner Denzel, but you got to come with it. You can't. He's got that, that good laugh. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he smiles after yeah. everything. <laughs> yeah, something yeah. like that. <laughs> something. He kind of look at you side eye like, "What you talking about?" Yeah. And it almost like like you're like. He's looking at you through the movie. It's like, oh, yeah. Like, like, I know you've seen him in that movie where he was like uh, the guy, just the unassuming guy. And he was, you know, that white girl he was cool with. And I forgot what the name of, name of that movie, but he went like straight ham in that movie. Yeah, I was yeah. like, jeez. I yeah. forgot what it was called. He was just an unassuming guy. He was like an ex CIA or ex something. And I mean, you talking about some stuff. I mean, that's yeah. how went beast mode on that. Oh, anyway. Speaking about going beast mode. My man, he screws. <laughs> why? Mode. Why would you want to sign up to be the board of directors for the APTA Student Assembly? Oh man. Okay. So, I think to to understand like my motives behind that, you just gotta like understand my personality, right? Mm-hmm. And I think this podcast has been like a great um, representation of like who I am and where I've come from and why I think the way I think and why I do the things I do, but. So, like, my um, – have you guys ever done the Myers-Briggs personality tests? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so I'm, an, I'm, like, on the border between E and I, like, extrovert, introvert, and then the rest are, like, uh, 
NFJ. So ENFJ is like my primary. That's what I get. Mm -hmm. And that's a, what's called a protagonist. So it's like the Obama, the Oprah Winfrey, those type of individuals that are um, uh, like altruistic and see the big picture and are trying to advance like advance everything it's like two percent of the population i was like really surprised like man yeah. that's pretty cool but good, good. Um, let me be clear uh, yeah <laughs> Chris, <laughs> this is uh Barack obama just tuning in uh like i say i'm off of uh, water skiing and having a great time like I said, thank you thank you for the shout out i'm a big fan again chris man dude you're too Yo, good at that bro you're yeah too i'm good telling you he's, he's gonna be an snl <laughs> well, seriously see. bro sorry to interrupt no no we're good yeah, so um, then you ran, okay. you, you won the yeah. position of yep. a director of com, yep. Um, yep. old DC, D-O-C, yep. Yep. dot. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> and and what's, what does that role exactly entail? What's the mission over there? Yeah, so, uh, so the overall mission of our board um, is essentially we have like three major goals, right? So um, we want to improve like active membership, uh, improve professionalism and DPT and PTA students. And then the last one is just like communicating with students and trying to help improve communication. So to students, from students back to us as the board uh, and the APTA, and then to like our external stakeholders. So whoever, whoever that is, um, that, that's like campaigns like Choose PT and uh, um, yeah. Nice. So, so all the, any, anyone external from the APTA. And social media and, campaign. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yep. So then I spend like maybe 20 hours a week, which right now is, is pretty straining because like I spend, my work weeks are like 60 hour, 60 hour work weeks. They're like, it's just really busy in the sports setting. Right. Um, so yeah, man, like a typical day will be no nine to five. like, like I <laughs> say what? No nine to five. <laughs> no nine to five. Oh, okay. Man, right, no, that's fine. Not for me, man. So the typical day will be like, I'll wake up at six um, I'll go to work, uh, work from like seven to now, like seven, seven thirty ish to about seven and then work out, drive home, eat some dinner and then spend like the last fleeting, like waking moments trying to like answer emails or do anything else that I can do. Mm -hmm. Um, that's just a season, right? It's just right now. So as soon as this ends next week, then I'll have more time to devote to that role. But it involves all the social media stuff that we do uh, for our board and, you know, accomplishing our objectives, uh, trying to get students more involved, uh, the blog, um, and then anything else having to do with the APTA. And one, one big mission that I've tried to do is try to, like, put some, like, personification into, like, who the APTA is, you know? Because then, you, like, as a student, you think about, like, APTA, and it seems like this big thing that's so far away and hard to hard to relate with and mm -hmm. man like as soon as i got my introduction orientation in december when i went out there to washington dc like i met all the apta staff and they are incredible and most of them are not physical therapists so what? they are yes man they're not pts huh? they're not pts they're not ptas they are from all walks of life and they just come to because they care about physical therapy and they're just trying to help us so the main contact, so the main person that I work with, she's a, um, she is a, a new media specialist. She was like a communication major um, in school. She has her master's, uh, and she's incredible, man. So we work together like hand in hand to create all the graphics, um, pre create all the pieces for the for the pulse for the blog, do all of our videos, all of the Facebook Live videos, all of the agendas that we create, everything, um, and she really like she's the mastermind behind everything that we do so um, it's been incredible to learn from her and uh, really just learn how like what people think and how to target like certain audiences and like what people want to hear and how to make it light so that people really care and stay engaged you know yeah. like i can't mm -hmm. always come at people like spewing just information left and right it's yeah. gonna people are just not gonna engage so mm -hmm. it's you gotta make it entertaining you guys, yeah you guys do a great job of that so Thank you. Yeah, shout out to you guys, man. Thank you, man. Yeah. That's what that's what cursing and bad impressions will do for you. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, but um, Cruz, man, like yeah. uh, I uh, learned about the the position that you have 
and, and all the stuff that you do first through uh, Alexis Morgan when she had the position before you. Yeah. And she was, I thought she was awesome. You know, my, I love exchange ex, exchange essay. Yeah. I've been a fan of those chats for a while. The first one I saw was with Alexis and Jerry Durham. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know, that one just hooked me because, because Jerry's going to curse a lot and, yeah. and say some <laughs> yeah. real shit. And I was like, Oh yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to subscribe to these. Mm-hmm. And then, and then it was so awesome to see somebody who I already knew uh, get the position after her. And I was mm-hmm. like, hell yeah, Cruz is going to be taken over. And then, you know, you just kept bringing it, kept uh, progressing with now the exchange chats are on Facebook live, yeah. um, mm-hmm. you know, more so than just YouTube. And then you yeah. just interviewed the freaking president yeah. of the whole damn thing. Uh, <laughs> Sharon Dunn. Yeah. Um, and that was awesome. And then, you know, I've seen you with Jeff Moore on as well and others. And yeah, just thanks for doing that, man. Thanks for devoting more of your time to to making students feel more comfortable with the APTA. Because yeah. a lot you, of because a lot of us don't know what it is. No, and I mean we do have eight minutes left on this recording. Yeah, uh, so we'll we'll see if we can can get enough uh, info on here. But if not, we might have to send another one because this is the the serious questions that that I know we've had some discussion on the masterminds group with this, that crazy yeah. night when everybody went live yep. trying to share their points. Um, that was, that was pretty epic. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, we'll, we'll definitely have to do some editing cause I'm trying to get my thoughts out and I know this is going to be some good stuff to ask you. And this is, you know, we kind of, we love this opportunity to have you on cause two things, right? We, the APTA is important. We can, we need to have an organization to to bring the pit bulls to the courtrooms <laughs> and to fight for us on that side, along with promote the profession and do all the random stuff that we can't even fathom that they do for us. Yeah. Um, that being said, there's a bunch of criticism of the APTA yeah. Yeah. from students, from uh, from the, the, my CI from, yeah, from other people, yeah. you know, from people in the profession that, you know, the biggest one is that there's no transparency. That was kind of what the discussion that Jeff Moore and y'all had that mm-hmm. night, that epic night. And uh, Tyler, we, we, uh, we were just talking about the fact that we can't really pinpoint to a lot of things that to say, Oh yeah, the APTA has done this for us yeah. or they've done that. Um, and well, I'll, I'll take a break here to let you speak to anything that you'd like to off of what I just said, Chris. Dude, that's a, I, I have these conversations so frequently, right? And, and transparency, when we created our strategic plan during December, we talked about that so much, like so much, because it's true. Like it's difficult as a, if you think about like any organizational structure, it's really, really difficult to be transparent. And, and I, and I don't mean like, like when I say transparency, I, I think people may be feeling like honesty and like a sharing of information. Well, to be, to be strategic at a level like that the APTA is at, um, it's, it's difficult to put a lot of information out because we don't really know yet. You know, we don't really know like what the strategy is going to be. So if we're like sharing, sharing a lot of different things and we haven't really created a position on it, like, it makes it really difficult to like stand by that. Right. Yeah. So, so that's, that's one thing that I've, that I've like learned uh, in being in my role. Right. But I will say that for us as the board of directors, the student assembly board of directors, we're in a really unique position because while we do have a lot of responsibility and make sure we have a huge responsibility to make sure our content is accurate and effective, Um, we don't have as much to lose as like the big board, right? The big APTA. So we can do these Facebook live videos and literally, man, like I'm live, you know, when I go, when I do these things. So like you can ask whatever you want and I'll have to comment on that. Like I can't, I literally cannot shake that question because (laughs) everyone sees it when it's, when we're live, you know, like everyone is, everyone is watching the same feed. So, um, yeah, like I, like I really, we've really tried as a board, as a student board to be transparent with our constituents and make sure that they feel heard and feel like their, uh, their opinions matter because 
like if it were just the 10 of us, like we would not be able to accomplish anything, you know, all the goals that we're trying to, like it's, it takes everyone to, uh, to be able to really create a movement, you know? Yeah. All right. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. So, so yeah, man, like, like it, it's important the, the stuff that you said, like I hear it all the time, you know, and I hear people tell like, what's the value of being a member and like, like sell me on it. Like why, you know, why should I do that? And it's like, I'm like, I ask them like, okay, like, why, why are, why are you, or why are you not a member? Like, let me educate you and yeah. find out like, what are the important things for right. you? Let me bring value to you based on your interests. I can't just tell you like what it is for me because me is different than you, you know, it's different than, than Tyler and Jared and Dimir. Like it's totally, it are, the reasons are, the reasons for getting engaged are going to be totally different. Yeah. So yeah, yeah man. but like a few things like, one of the things I always talk about can, is, can we say that we have three uh, less like yeah. about three minutes. Can we just send you another link? If that's yeah, all right. Let's do it. Let's I want to, I want to give this the credit and time it deserves and not have to Absolutely, rush it. Absolutely, man. Let's do it. Yeah. Cool.